Salam Ramtullah. Sidi, is it ego when we tell someone that we are sticking to our Shaykh's teachings when they try to share their knowledge? <clears throat> is it ego when, when we say we're sticking to our Shaykh's teaching when they're sharing their knowledge? We have to be sensitive not to offend people, we don't want to come off as rude people. But there's a limit that people feel it necessary to teach and spread whatever little they know and that teaching can contaminate the heart, especially if it's contrary to haqqaiqs and realities and especially if they're going to try to interpret hadith and Qur'an. It can be all over the spectrum of, of confusion. So we generally try to meet with people as friends and, and very basic informations. If you enter into a relationship with one person feels it's necessary to teach you and dominate you by their teaching then it's probably best to keep a distance if possible. Because that, that becomes a difficult situation where some people they want to be a teacher, they want to be a shaykh. There are even people who say there are no shaykhs but they act like shaykh and they want to give everybody a teaching. And that's the problem is they begin to set confusion and if you're new on the path they, they quote and misquote hadith, they misquote about ta'weez and they say, oh there's, there's ta'weez about amulets, there's hadith about amulets. But those amulets that they're talking about were bones. And Prophet making reference to those people who were putting like these bones of animals and creatures and, and making all, all sorts of idealistic uh, references. There was nothing in reference to that. As a matter of fact Prophet was teaching about ruqya and that to invoke Allah's names and invoke Qur'an for the healing is all of Islam. So everything is misquoted and mistaught in the last days. So it can cause a great amount of confusion. So we get a large amount of those types of emails, what's this, what's that, what's this. Anytime you come to a shaykh don't ask from any of their teaching, is it haram? Because that's a slap in their face. Do you think there would be a shaykh who's teaching you haram? Then why even email him, run? So if you need a clarification then basically look through all his websites and begin to read and educate yourself. This is a time of jahaliyyah and everything that that madhab teaches of from Dajjal it's going to say it's from paradise and know that it's in hell. And if you follow their teachings it take you onto the path into hell. And anything they say will take you to hell, know that it takes you to paradise. And now they show themselves, they show what they're doing and what they believe. They have card games in the middle of Ramadan, they're posting pictures of big, uh, look like casinos and that's it brings families together <laughs> InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can our feelings be influenced just by thinking or looking at people? If it happens, does it mean that the feeling is not ours? Yes, the, the heart is a very finely tuned instrument that in the presence of people you can sense their feeling, their anxiety, their anger, their confusion because the heart is picking up the vibrations. So it may begin to beat very fast. And you don't know why your heart is beating, it's not from you're not nervous but it's picking up the vibration of the person that you've entered into that presence. So if we understand that people are energy beings then definitely anyone who does energy practices begins to sense, begins to feel and that's why it's very important not to be overly empathetic, overly concerned about everyone. You're putting too much of your soul's emphasis and you will actually begin to carry their sadness, their depression, their sickness, their anxieties. They're like a shirt, 
You know if you come to somebody too much the, oh what's this shirt, what's this shirt, what's this shirt, before you know it you've taken that shirt and you've worn it. And as a result you go home depressed, you go home anxious, you go home confused and, and, and in disarray. So that's why I keep a, a spiritual distance and unless you're focusing on the shaykh and those whom are positive then you focus with all your heart and every, everyone else very superficial through your mind, don't put your heart into everything because then you go away carrying everything, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Can you please tell us the etiquette when visiting the grave of just regular people, not awliyaullah? The etiquette of visiting the grave? Uh, visit them and recite Surat al-Fatiha, du'a, whatever comes to your heart. But if you're visiting the grave of awliyaullah then to connect your heart and to recite, to make lots of salawats, asking for their Muhammadan reality to dress you and to bless you. What make them to be awliya is their overabundant Muhammadan nur within them. So immense amounts of salawats and love for Sayyidina Muhammad because you're at the Muhammadiyoon light and that light is to dress the servants who come in its proximity inshaAllah. And anyone else you pray for them and uh, whatever comes to your heart depending upon how dear and near they are to you then alhamdulillah you pray on them, you recite Surat al Yaseen for them, whatever comes to your heart at that time inshaAllah. Give food on their behalf. Visiting is, is one adab but if it's loved ones and those whom you love and have passed, do good deeds that continuously reach them. That's when people's faith are real. Means that you, you go to the majlis and you feed. You give to support and say, I want to feed people and I want iftar for people, I want to take care of these oceans and I want you to do it in the name of my grandmother and that's between you and Allah. As soon as you wrote that intention, so when you write the note on our site and that's why we sent in a note section because we want you to type that note. Not that the shaykh is going to go and start writing things because people don't have that level of faith. But as soon as you put your fingers and start typing it also been typed into your book. And that's the real registry, kiram al-katibeen. They have registered what you wrote and what you did. You wanted that food to go for your grandmother, then it been written on there. And that hisab is, is Allah is the best of those who keep hisab. If you want to know about an NFT and, and smart contract, these are all dunya. What do you imagine of the smartest contract from Allah That as soon as you do something, your name and your intention, what you wrote is locked onto that contract for all of eternity. And as a result Allah sends the reward of that contract that you got that well and it's blessing that soul. Only these contracts and these understandings and these technologies, why is coming in the last days? Because it's a sign from the heavens. These, these things that you call blockchain, we say, what was blockchain? It's taking information instead of centralizing in one location, you put it on a thousand locations and every piece has one bit of that. What was the original blockchain? Qur'an. That's why nobody can tamper with it because nobody one person holds it, nobody one person interprets it. Allah sent a hundred million, five hundred million people whom recite it and each one memorizes it. And if anyone tampers with it, the other 499,999,000 hafiz will know. This example, I don't know how many hafiz there are on the earth but mashallah must be huge. That's the original blockchain. What was the original smart contract? Is it everything written onto your hisab? You give five dollars, it's written on your book. And in the note section say, I want to dedicate this well to my children and I want that, that rizq and that provision and that light and that blessing to keep dressing their soul. In this time of difficulty every sip that somebody's taking what the reward is, 
we don't understand. But your smart contract wrote that it would go from them to the child's name. So these are opportunities of immense faith. When somebody has that level of faith then they understand. Now they're beginning to understand that this smart contract locks you into something. So they want to sell you a share of something and they say, oh, by this smart contract you're locked into it and nobody can cheat you from it. What do you think then Allah That as soon as you write something, Ya Rabbi I'm doing this for this sake, your smart contract is locked. And that, that is, a, is between you and Allah and Allah is the best to give his sab. means your dividends are flowing through that contract to yourself and to whomever you've given and gifted that reward. So this is all coming very clear on the last days when people are understanding, oh is Allah going to know? Yeah Allah knows everything, if you're going to know everything on this earth imagine how much is written and angels will know everything. That's why everyone who's taking notes. Now smart contract have all of these Muhammadan haqqaiqs. Deep, deep Muhammadan realities are now on a smart contract that the angels have written on your hisab. So as soon as you wrote two of these words, the angels wrote it, it's locked on a smart contract onto your soul for all of eternity. You will be raised on the day of judgment that those knowledges were in your book. You didn't know its value, Allah says, the value, let me show you, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, if you have to fight conflicting emotions all the time coupled with the constant impatience of the Islamic world today, then what do I need to do or read as protection? Study the last days that the, the ignorance and guidance are different, right? So if we become ignorant of the last days, what happens? We want to go out, we want to protest, oh why are the Palestinians like this? Why this like this? Why like this? Because we don't seem to know what time it is. And the one whom doesn't know the past has no idea of what's the future. Have you heard these expressions? So means tariqah comes to take away ignorance and give knowledge and that knowledge is power and that power will set you free. What are these expressions they came up with? Because these are all haqqaiqs that when you learn these realities and you connect with the light, you connect with their guidance, when the light and the light of faith and love begins to enter the heart, you know what time it is. You know exactly what time it is and you're about to meet those whom are very precious souls. So why to be upset? You should be happy. And if you know what time it is, you know what immense amount of lights and love Allah is going to be dispensing. These knowledges they're giving permission to put them out, why? We're at the beginning of time, you'd have to sit for how many years in tariqah and show how many years of sharia you learned before you could even sit with the shaykhs of tariqah. Why they reversed everything on the last days in which they don't care if anyone knows any sharia and they're going to teach you all haqqaiqs. Why? Because there's no more time left. And those haqqaiqs Allah making and dressing their souls to illuminate them at a very progressive rate. And as a result if they meditate these lights are coming very strong. And those whom become illuminated they realize, what is there to be sad about? These lights are coming, this support is coming, these energies are coming, nothing to be involved with, don't get involved in politics as if you're coming against what Allah sending. Allah sending everything and Allah taking from this earth whom doesn't need to be on this earth and if they're good Allah rewards them in the world of light and then they're appearing on the world of light to help us free from their body and their form. So everything has a hikmah and wisdom what to be upset about inshaAllah. Allah give us all sabr, patience and good character inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi is it? Yeah. 
Saidi, is it good for us to remind people of proper adab? If you know them and you're around the adab of tariqah and uh, around the center then sure. It's always good to, to remind about adab because nobody knows the adab. So that, that's uh, the hidden science. We're talking today, I was talking today and we're talking about the adab of, of salah. That what type of character did the companions have while praying in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Their belief was what? That Prophet is in the presence of Allah So then how do you think that they prayed? By keeping their eye on Prophet They understood that he Sayyidina Muhammad is in the presence of Allah If he's in ruku, why are you in sujood? Means then you don't understand who he is So there was an adab and there was an understanding and they learned that adab. And by learning that adab their heart began to open to who he is So that adab is the same for tariqah. So when they have a reverence and understanding that he knows I don't know. What he sees I don't see, so as a result I just copy and mimic and I place no importance on what I'm doing. So how could Sahabi pretend like they're what? In the presence of Allah what Prophet is in standing position and they're in sujood? No, they would have an excellence and to understand that they'd be lost in the love and ishq of Prophet and they would be seeing their imam in their eyes and in their heart. And if he was in ruku, they would be in ruku. And if he's standing, they would be standing. If he's in sujood, they would be in sujood because they never overtake their imam or surpass or move ahead. So they understood what the imam and the reality of the position of the imam. So then what happens in the dunya now? Is Prophet not the imam? of every association, right? So you elect your imam based on what? What fiqr? The one whom most represents the Muhammadan reality. So everything is based on Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why in jama'ah everybody just follows the imam. So when there is no jama'ah then the shaykh represents the re- reality of Prophet So these are big realities in adab but the last days adab is lost. As a result people don't find their reality because they are tariq al-adab. They keep a, a adab that doesn't open for them that reverence. The reverence and the character of what Allah your character is, is uh, immense. It's Allah's description. For Prophet ﷺ, he was a khuluq, khuluq al azim not that you, you gave so much and oh mashallah look how, how hafiz you are. But Allah was so immensely happy with the khuluq. So khuluq is the top priority in your aqeedah and everything has to be based on your khuluq and character. You don't raise your voice over the voice of the shaykh because you didn't raise your voice in the presence of Prophet You kept a very soft demeanor as to not. Why then Allah described in your last episode you described that verse, don't raise your voice over the voice of Prophet and none know that but the people of tafakkur and contemplation, the people of good character. So those whom scream and yell. They, they're coming against the adab. So then you know at that time Prophet must not be in that association of their yelling and screaming and, and making all howling and growling. So everything is based on adab. They don't move, they don't yell, they don't raise their voice in the association because Prophet tajalli is in that association. 
they don't move, they don't do tasbih, they don't do zikr if there's a sobat and talk because the light of Prophet is there. If the one has bad adab then that light doesn't dress them to the extent that it should have dressed them because it's tariq al-adab, it goes against the adab. And Allah wants to see what? Your khuluq, that's it, tariqah is the khuluq. Allah is not impressed by anybody being hafiz, by anybody the, doing these actions or that actions. Allah is impressed by all that you know or all that you don't know, you have such a wonderful character. If you have a lot of knowledge then you have bad characters, oh look at that, the knowledge this person has and look at how their character is. It didn't help them and if they don't know anything and they have beautiful character then Allah saying, oh look how wonderful this person is going to be. If I illuminate them and they have this type of character they're going to be shining like a, a sunshine. So everything comes down to the character and the adab and those who know they teach very softly to people. They give by examples in themselves but they don't post on somebody's page, hey you're doing this, hey you're doing that. That again is, 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 no, is aggressive and that doesn't help anyone. But the teaching and recommendation is sometimes sharing a story and sharing an experience of adab and so people can become enlightened to the way of tariqah and to get the rewards that they're trying to get from Allah inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah What is the significance of the phoenix in dreams? Significance of the phoenix in reality and in dreams, it represents the, the light and the struggle, it represents Ya Allah, Ya Muhammadun sallallahu wa Ya Ali and that uh, Allah to dress us from that light, dress us from that uh, barakah and that the phoenix is the bird that destroys all the chains of grief and bondage from this world. And the immense support of Imam Ali for the arrival of Imam Mahdi That we pray that Allah make our heart from that light and that the madad and the support of Imam Ali to reach to us into our hearts and into the depth of our character and our wujud and that we become phoenixes in ourself that break the bonds and the chains of this nafs and this body inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Huma Rahma Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah In Farsi they call Huma Humaya Rahma Ali Humaya Rahma Ali is the phoenix of Ar Rahma Ar Rahman Wa Alaikum As Salaam um, Sayyidi, is it okay to read awrah du'as in random order? <coughs> I read all the du'as in order except two du'as, Aman Rasul and Ihda later. InshaAllah, you do whatever you want. If you want to read it then you read it but uh, I'm sure that Mawlana Shaykh put it in an order that it is a movement in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and has a, a, a dress but if you're forgetting at that time and read it after then alhamdulillah whatever I'm sure everything has its own blessing. Try to take any type of individuality out of what we do. And once you fully mimic the shaykhs then you can add on top of that but take the desire of individuality out. InshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi what and is… What is question uh, on, the, on the light and the guidance of light and, and the importance of how the light is a magnet drawing them towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Yes, continue. Uh, say, what is the best time for meditation during Ramadan? Any time. So as long as they're not sleepy then start to meditate and fall asleep inshaAllah and any time that they can connect their heart and they feel the, the closeness. 
some people that may be Zohr, that may be Asr, that may be after Maghrib depending upon what their, their feeling and their energy. And then the, the meditation is strongest also in uh, Qiyam al-Layl, the Salat al-Taraweeh, the night vigil. So that is a, a time in which uh, they've had their coffee, they've had their refreshments and food and everything. They can sit now and, and patiently meditate, connect their heart and these are the, the powers and energies that Allah is dressing upon the servant at night time inshaAllah. InshaAllah, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yaseefoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ila sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqat al-Nashbandiyat al-Aliyah wa sayra wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha.